told him you never know. You never know. That's why we're here doing a premium thing. It's because I'm looking at YouTube. I mean, and, and even the streaming or the podcast game and how you make money there. Like, for everyone watching, like, you have no idea how important this Bravo, Famigo, mm -hmm. this whole premium thing is. The only Steve's thing is extremely important to our business. It's a whole new revenue stream. We're going to grow this more and more and more. Get yeah. More and more active. It's cutting out the middleman and like it's really an interesting time to be a creator. And we're at the forefront of this in the music game. And um, podcasters have been doing it on what? Uh, on Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. So it's not that foreign to the podcast space. But for creators, I mean, let me just explain why this is so important. And I know it's, I know there's a negative stigma to monthly memberships because the thing is like OnlyFans, and that's what a lot of people will resonate with when they hear monthly membership. Right. And it's also a negative stigma to the consumer. You got like, you guys feel like, why are they charging us for content, et cetera? Like, I get it. But if you look at the numbers, which a lot of consumers don't know, um, I think on like Spotify and Apple, for instance, if you're a musician, to make minimum wage you have to get you have to get like a million streams a month i think how hard it is to reach a million streams in general it is. on any song so you have to get a million streams a month collectively to just make minimum wage and what is minimum what do you call a minimum wage like, like monthly like wage? three three grand or something three grand a month maybe uh a million streams is more than three grand isn't it but we're like you get taxed on it like let's just True. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah like if you no, just you're right if you, cut, ballpark. you cut it out twenty five hundred dollars three grand whatever right you have to get about a million streams a month to just make minimum wage stream which is insane it is insane it's insane to be expected youtube's about. far worse youtube's worse than that exactly so you think about as a creator uh having to appeal to the masses and reach these huge numbers just to make minimal dollars where if you just appeal to your top 10% of your fan base who really, really care about you, not casual fans, but people who really care about you, that will pay five bucks, 10 bucks a month. Think, think you only need 300, no, how many? To reach $3,000 to reach $3, a month, you need. Oh, uh, 10, what is it, what are we charging? What, what are we charging? Let's say 10, 10 let's say $10 a month. 10, 10 bucks a month times you 300 need, people. You need five, 300, yeah, you need 300 subscribers. So if you have 300 people, if you're a musician, you got like 25,000 or 50,000 followers, say. Right? Yeah. But you have these three to 500 people that like really fuck with you. Okay. They will pay $10 a month for an exclusive experience with like, yeah. you know, behind the scenes stuff, exclusive songs, right? whatever, live streams. Yeah. To just 300 to 500 people. Yeah. Then you're, you're, you, you, that's all you need. You don't need a million people. you can people. make a living. You can make a real living. Exactly. You know, like, and, and, and even, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I even, I think on a broader scale, that's why we got, I'm actually, we're investors in the company that we're using as well. Mm -hmm. um, and equity owners. Yes. Um, I'm a huge believer in like, this is where commerce is going in general. So say you at home, you're an amazing mechanic. You can, you can fuck a car up any which way and fix it. Um, you know, I think there's a, I think there's a business plan. There's there's an actual appeal or actual like it makes sense for you could be like you set up a camera, just like hey your engine's not working. You go through you set up a fucking it's like a master class. A master class. It's that yeah. idea. But you know you have just let's just like even dumb it down. Like you have 20 people that will pay you know X Y Z. Like 20 people. You're gonna go out and fix a car anyway. at Your job. Say you work. You're a mechanic privately or whatever, mm -hmm. or not part of, privately. You can vlog that, make a, make a series, you put up one, one a week, and sell that in a marketplace. Like, or you sell access on a monthly subscription where you're showing how to fix a carburetor, you're showing how to change a tire. These are all things that people want to know, yeah. you know? And if you're that good at it, right? Mm -hmm. You, like in the COVID era of like this volatility and like losing your job, like places going out of business, you know? Like you could fucking be at your house, like you can make money. You know what I mean? Just doing what you do, you know? Exactly. And this is where I see the future of commerce going. I, I don't know when exactly, but I know we're headed this well, direction. Well, it's, it's, it's happening in waves with different mediums. And it's, you know, this has already been, the monthly membership thing has already been a thing with, you've seen all the major networks going this way. Yeah. Uh, you know, like NBC, HBO, mm -hmm. like all these major networks now have streaming, so Disney, they all have their own streaming services yeah. now that you pay a monthly membership for. Used to be something you got as part of like a, a cable subscription. Now it's all streaming based, 
and it's straight to consumer and it's, you know, whatever. They're making original content and whatever. Um, and then it happened with uh, sex workers. <laughs> yeah. S sex workers came, or music, sorry. Before the sex workers, music came along, Spotify, Apple, mm -hmm. things that you used to not have, uh, you know, now you pay a monthly membership for. Um, you used to buy music, you know, by batch, by... I mean, porn is actually like, when you say sex workers, it's kind of funny, because like, there's a lot of regular girls doing OnlyFans that like, wouldn't consider themselves sex workers, but they kind of are. Technical, I mean, technical. But porn in general, like, yeah. a good example is porn. These girls got fucked over, and pun intended. Like, <laughs> they they got fucked over. Like, one, they're abused in that space pretty heavily by this... I would liken it to like, the way I look at like artists getting, like the starving artist term, where like, the corporate world would fuck over the artists because they need money and like prey on them people, right? Yep. The sex workers, porn girls in general, very extreme, like you can't even imagine how abusive that, that whole uh, industry is and like the tastemakers and the people that were running those industries were taking such advantage of these girls. Yeah. They're taking advantage of these girls, obviously physically, like making them do shit but also not getting, not getting the proper pay. They become, they're bringing in tons of money. They for had to the, answer to people. Yeah, but they're bringing in tons of money for these, for the guys, you know, running the, like back in the traditional porn days before the OnlyFans. It's like an old school record deal. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. how I'm likening it. And these girls end up, you know, broke after getting, you know, they're famous. There's millions and millions of people watching their, their you know, them have sex and do all this shit, right? Mm -hmm. And you think those, like, if anyone should be getting paid, it's those girls. Like, they're, they're fucking putting it all on the line, you know? There's, you really can't bounce back from, not bounce back. Taking a lot of dick. Yeah, taking a lot of dick. And, Yards of dick. And taking a, a lot of abuse, and you really can't go do anything else with your life. That's my point, like. Right. So, a lot of these girls, I spent tons of girls commit suicide, tons of these, they end up homeless and, and uh, drug abusers from, you know, it's very, it's a hard, a hard game. Just watch the movie Boogie Nights with Mark Wahlberg. He went through the ringer too. And now look yeah. at now to look at it. If only he had OnlyFans. Just flashing his hog around. Dirk Diggler could have just done it privately on his own terms. Exactly. And now you can do it from in safety of your home. There's nobody telling you what to do, making you suck their dick so they can get put you in this video or that show. And do that. Most like, of them aren't even doing porn. No, they're not. They're just, and a lot of them are just... They're just waving their titties around a little bit. They're just repurposing what they put on Instagram and get a little, you know, showing a little nipple and doing this and that. And they're making real money. Yeah. And it's, I, from, from on their day own one, terms. from day one, I, I was like, this is awesome for women. And it, it really is. Because, like, I, you know, I don't necessarily, like, I'm not attracted to it. I've never had, an, like, I've never looked at OnlyFans or anything. It's just not for me. I don't necessarily think it's the right play for your life, but I'm not judging at all. And I think it also is extreme. If you were going to be in that game anyway, it's an amazing thing. And now they're making fucking millions. You can do less, you can do it on your own terms, and you can make more money. And they're making a ton of money, and they're, yeah. set, they're putting their shit out there, and it's hard on your life. Like, when time goes by, they'll look back and regret it probably or whatever. But at least now they could say, fuck, I survived. I made a bunch of money, I invested it, I'm a businesswoman now. You know, like they can look at themselves as businesswomen more, you know? Yeah. Uh, men and women are doing it, you know? So I think it's dope. This is the future, it's where it's going. No, 100%. Um, but yeah, just to add to the point, um, it, went to, it went to networks, it went to music, it went to, to females on OnlyFans. Now I think it's gonna be coming to creators. And I think, yeah. I think uh, <clears throat> we're obviously one of the first people to do it, but I think in a couple of years, it's going to be the norm. I think yeah. a lot of your favorite entertainers and musicians are going to have a multi-subscription type service. And it favors us, and that's why we're we're the we're really one of the we're the first musicians to do it. Yeah. I think some like Tiger, like he's he's doing it. Tiger's flashing his cock. Oh, he's fucking. He's fucking. He's fucking on there. Yeah. Um, but I want to say Tory Lanez had an OnlyFans where he was doing music stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, DJ Khaled and certain people were doing it. Yep. We just figured, we just, I, I'm proud of the way we did it. You know, like we partnered with somebody early and, and for, for somebody like us, this is my last thing I'll say on this. It's just like, this kind of gets back to like, this rewards the creators who are really actually creating an identity. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of artists and especially in the music game in particular, 
It's mandatory for, for you to be successful on this model, this premium model. For you to be successful, you need to have fans that really care. Yep. And I think that's what we've done. You know, so it's rewarding for us. It will be rewarding. It already is extremely rewarding for us. You mm -hmm. know? And it's it's helped our lives a ton. You know, lucrative for us. And uh, you know, being somebody who funds all this shit out of pocket and our travel and all this stuff, it's yeah, it's a huge piece. So. Cheers to you guys. I think it's going to change the whole perception of wanting to be famous, too. Mm -hmm. 